Hi, my name is Jeffrey de Gans from Dutch Audio and today I will talk about the IC 1.1 insert computer which is basically the follow-up of our insert machine series which is a full analog machine which you could use for inserting compressors, EQs and things like that. Uh, this is the follow-up of that series and it's, it's the same technique. It's using relay switching for for inserts and things like that, switching in and out of the mid-side matrix, which means it's fully passive. Unless, of course, you're using active input gain or active output gain or the mid-side section, but for the rest, it's fully passive. It's also a real connection because we are using relays instead of active switching, which will also color the sound. It will add some distortion, but also, which I think is really important, is that with active switching, interaction between certain compressors and EQs and things like that will be gone when you use that. With relay switching, you will always have that sound of the interaction of the input transformer of one compressor uh, connected to the output of an EQ or things like that. There will always be some interaction. And with the insert machines and now with the IC 1.1, the insert computers, that will still remain the same, which I think is it needs to be that way for mastering engineers. Okay, this is what the unit looks like. Uh, the big advantage compared to the insert machines is that this is computer controlled, which means not can you only say things with a VST plugins, uh, automate things with a VST plugin, but it's also possible to make the gain rates bigger because now with the IC 1.1, we're using digital pot meters, which is different compared to our insert machine series which used set switches. Uh, the gain range then was plus and minus 5.5 dB. But now with the IC 1.1, the gain range is plus and minus 10 dB, which is way more than enough for mastering engineers. But another big advantage is that with the insert machines, the gain steps was 0.5 dB per step. With the IC 1.1, uh, every step is 0.1 dB. So way more precise and way more control. And the cool thing is you can also save those settings in your project because of the VST3 plugin, which I will show you in a bit. As said, we're using digital pot meters now instead of uh, step switches, which also makes it more clean, makes it more transparent because the, the signal path is even shorter because of using those digital pot meters. We, we did a lot of research with the digital pot meters because there are quite a lot of available versions, but the one we are using came out as even more transparent than step switches because of known reasons, which I think is a big plus. Okay, the unit itself, this is what it looks like. Uh, as you might have seen, there's a display in the center of the unit. Um, in this case, it shows the input gain the MS width, which is switched off right now, and the output gain, which is set to plus 1.8 dB. This is the input section. If you want to change the input gain, you can simply tweak the encoder and you can see the value on the display right away. If you want to switch the input section off, so the input gain off, it's a matter of pressing the encoder and then you can see that it's switched off. When its active input stage is switched off, it's fully passive. It's just relays switching the signal directly from the XLRs to the first inserts. When I press the button, then in that case, the active input gain is switched on and you get the control. Plus and minus 10 dB in 0.1 dB per step. Uh, if I go to the right, there's the active output section, which is the same section. Pressing the button, pressing the encoder will switch on and off. And of course, plus or minus 10 dB in 0.1 dB per step. The input section has said, uh, next to the encoder for the input, there's another button and it says polarity and LR swap. If I press this button once, then the polarity of both left and right will be swapped. It could be that bass, bass drum are just a tiny bit more tight because you swap polarity. Sometimes it simply sounds just a tiny bit better when you swap polarity. So just by pressing this button, you swap polarity. If you press and hold this button for two seconds, it starts blinking. And what you do then, you will swap left and right. This is not something which you would use uh, in practice for, for, for actual mastering, but it could come in handy to get a different perspective of the stereo image. Um, sometimes when the polarity of left and right is swapped, 
all of a sudden you hear things differently um, could come in handy and so it's a double function so press it once polarity press it for two seconds and it will blink and then you swap left and right the IC 1.1 has eight inserts in this case all eight inserts are switched on if you want to switch it off it's just a matter of pressing the button just like our insert machine series uh, the inserts are green and all other functions like in this case swap 3 4 is a yellow button the buttons themselves are not latching switches like on our previous series but they are momentary switches which feels more intuitive it feels more direct and you might have noticed it already if you look carefully on the display if for instance i switch off insert 7 you will see bm limit if i switch it on again you can see this here if i switch on this one ssl comp you can set the labels yourself and if you want to switch labels if you want to change the labels you can do that in the plugin which i will show you right now this is what the plugin looks like if you click here you can set insert labels so for instance uh, insert one is called quarter eq let's say that this is a better maker eq okay if i click save now you can also see on the button itself that it's better maker eq now so it in the plugin you can see it on the button itself and if you go back to the unit itself now if you press the button again you can see that it's a better maker eq now so we changed the label on the plugin but also on the unit itself the labels themselves are saved in the ic 1.1 so for instance if you take it to another studio the labels will still be there it's saved in the eprom and if you uh, open a plugin there then the plugin will get the labels out of the IC 1.1 and put them in the plugin. As said, eight inserts, insert one and two are fully passive uh, inserts, just relays. So if you switch it in and out, you will simply switch those inserts into your chain. Same goes for insert three and four, which is also 100% passive. Uh, but there's another button, which is the swap function. If I press this button, insert three and four will be swapped in order so now it goes from one two three four but if i press this button it's one two four three so the order of insert three and four will be swapped just by pressing the button sometimes when i don't know like an eq in front of a compressor or the other way around they interact with each other and you can play around with that insert five and six are Passive inserts when the mid-side section is off, because insert 5 or 6 is also possible to use in mid-side. But when you don't use the mid-side section, it's fully passive, just like insert 3, 4, uh, insert. Yeah, basically all 8 inserts are passive, unless you switch things on. If I press this button, the mid-side section comes in. Uh, it's the same active circuitry that we used in our insert machines. It's based on quite a well-known uh, circuitry from Wayne Kirkwood. And we did quite a lot of uh, adjustments to it. It's more precise now. It, the, the, the stereo crosstalk is better and things like that. This is mid-side. So if you switch it on, uh, the left channel will be the mid-channel and the right channel will be the side channel. There's another function which was on our bigger models, not on the smaller models, but now with the IC 1.1, it's also on the smaller, the IC 1.1 model. If I press the encoder in the middle, you can change the mid-side width, which is basically the gain of the side channel, which you will make louder or less loud. And if you make it less loud, the signal, the stereo image will be smaller, of course. And if you make it louder, then the stereo image will be wider with a gain range of plus and minus 10 dB. So also quite a lot bigger than our uh, previous models. And it comes in really handy just to change the stereo image. And you can disable it, enable it, so that you can also A, B between, do I really need that mid-side width or is it maybe better to switch it off? Insert seven and eight, fully passive inserts. Just like insert one to four, fully passive inserts. But insert eight has quite a neat feature which is the pre-8 button if i press this button all of a sudden insert number eight will be placed here so in front of insert one so for instance if you have a limiter or something on insert number eight and usually it's on 
the last insert, but you want to control some transients in the front of your chain and that limiter is really the right way to do it, but it needs to be placed in the front of your chain. You just press this button and all of a sudden that limiter is placed instead of insert 8, it will be right here. So in front of insert 1, which is a really cool feature, I think. Okay, so these are the inserts. Uh, the output section. This is, as said, the gain control for the output section. If you switch it off, you don't have any active gain on the output. You simply have just a couple of relays going directly to the XLRs on the back of the unit. And if I enable it, there we have the gain. Um, next to that, you might have spotted it, there's the insert bypass button. On our previous series, you had to choose between an active output gain or a bypass gain compensation. Uh, and sometimes we had requests for both those functions because it could be that it could be really handy to see what it sounds like with gain compensation. Because if you have all those inserts on, maybe you have like four or five dB of extra gain because of all the inserted devices on your inserts. And when you press bypass, then all of a sudden your gain will be lower, which is what you want to avoid. Uh, on the IC 1.1, we have both. We have an insert bypass. If I press and hold this button for two seconds, then all inserts will be bypassed. This will be blinking. All inserts will be blinking. And all of a sudden, all inserts are bypassed. But the cool thing is with the IC 1.1, if you press this button once, the insert gain compensation comes in active. And all inserts are bypassed now, but as you can see, it says bypass gain and all of a sudden we have extra gain. So for instance, your chain is 4.2 dB louder because of all the inserts, you can compensate for that. So you simply set the bypass gain compensation by ear, of course, uh, to louder. And when you press the button again, the bypass gain compensation is switched off, but still the output gain is set in this case to plus 1.8 dB. And so you can AB between compensated gain. So now the gain is compensated and you don't have that gain loss. So you press it once, you get this. And if you press and hold it for two seconds, then there's no gain compensation, but you just disable all inserts without any gain. Okay, let's move over to the plugin. This is what the plugin looks like. Uh, as you can see, these are all the same looking as the the, the unit itself. Uh, the plugin comes in VST3 right now. As you can see, all buttons um, yeah, can be used. If, for instance, if I press this button, the mid side, if I switch it on and off, I do this on the unit now, but you can see that it switches on and off here. I can do the same thing here. I can click on the button in the plugin and all of a sudden it switches off. If, for instance, I tweak the output gain, you can see it instantly. You can change things on both the plugin and in the unit itself. My gut feelings say that it's best and the most easiest thing to do is to use the buttons on the unit itself and just use the plugin for uh, saving things and seeing what is going on. Uh, but I think it feels more intuitive to actually press a button and then you can use the plugin to uh, automate things and then say things. As you can see right here, we have buttons which are snapshots. Uh, those snapshots are basically presets within presets. So for instance, if you have an album and you want to, I don't know, like different settings on track number one on an album then compared to track number two, compared to track number three, you can automate that by using snapshots. Uh, in this case, it, we just have something on snapshot number one. So what we're going to do right now is menu, snapshots, copy. And as you could see, we can paste and paste to all slots. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to paste it to all slots just to show you what it could do. So if I press O2, it says exactly the same thing. But if, for instance, I switch this off and I switch this off and I don't know, switch this off. If we're changing between O1 and O2, you can instantly see that things are changed. Also, we go here and we're changing the I don't know, the output gain, and we're switching this off, and we're switching this off. We can instantly switch between all those instance presets, which I think is a cool feature, because 
this is what you would use in practice when you're compiling an album. Track number one needs these settings. Track number two needs, doesn't need the very mu compressor, for instance. Track number three doesn't need the better maker EQ. It's really easy to control. So these are snapshots. Some other things. You will see rack rails and in the menu, you can switch things on and off in the settings. You can change the GUI, the scale. It's set to large now, but you can make it small. You can make it larger. Um, you can do all these kind of things. If you click show rack rails, for instance, if you click save now, you can see that those rack rails are gone. The auto add detected units, if it's switched on by default, which means if you connect a unit in your network, the plugin will automatically detect that a new unit is detected. You can switch that off, of course. And if you click save now, you can also add a unit by hand by typing in the IP address of the unit. I can imagine that if you have a fixed IP address for the unit by a DHCP reservation or something like that, that you do this. But in practice, I think most people will use the auto add detect units. If you have multiple units, you get a rack of units. So it could be that you have two or three of those units and all of a sudden you have all those units in one rack and they will simply align there. And those snapshots will also take place on all units at once. So this is the plugin. Right now we just have a PST free plugin. The audio unit uh, version is also coming up quite soon and we're also working on the AAX version. But for now we just have PST free. If you want to use it in Pro Tools, it's also possible to use a wrapper so that you could simply use that plugin in Pro Tools as well. So this is what the plugin looks like. Switch over to the unit itself again. It's a uh, one new unit, really compact. It's using an external power supply unit. It's a switch mode power supply, which means you can plug it into 100 to 250 volt AC. So it doesn't matter which country you are, if you're from the USA or the EU, it doesn't matter because it will always work the way you want it to work. In practice, people think that a switch mode power supply gives you noise gives you distortion whatever in practice it's actually the opposite we did quite a lot of tests back then with uh, linear power supplies versus switch mode power supplies and the noise floor was quite a lot lower with the switch mode power supply uh, compared to a linear power supply and a lot of bigger companies are also using uh, those switch mode power supplies for a reason now uh, for the rest the back of the unit holds um, xlrs for the input and the output on the left hand side you will see the power input uh, which you will connect your uh, switch mode power supply to next to that there's the network connector so the rj45 connector so the uh, network connector it connects to a standard network and yeah it will get an ip uh, address automatically you can also set it by hand if you want to there's a menu in the, the unit itself where you can set it but in practice the dhcp is the most easy thing to do the output section, output left, output right, same here, input left, input right. And as you could see, four DB25 connectors, which are for the inserts. Insert number one and two, insert number three and four, insert five, six, insert seven, eight. So each DB25 connector holds two inserts. We're following the analog Tescom standard. The cables themselves are a little bit harder to get, but we can also supply cables for you. Uh, we also sell Grim cables. I think that those cables simply sound brilliant and at a fair price. So if you want cables along with your products, you can also order them from the website as well. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, a small introduction to the IC 1.1. It's available for ordering right now. It's on the website. Uh, you can also download manuals. You can also download plugins. Uh, you can see the specifications. Uh, basically, everything is there. If you have any questions, just drop us a message. Uh, go to our website. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.